Yeah, direct misfire, talking many war games. Ben some and Spoon are taking aim. Comment, like, and subscribe today, keeping you notified. Warlike clans of the Baranga have been inhabitants of the far north of Mantica for thousands of years, while most men were drawn towards the Republic of Primavantua during the Age of Ice, the Varanga alone stood resolute in their great halls. Instead of fearing and retreating from their frigid cold, they embraced it, masters of the wild tundra and slopes of the ice mountains. The Varanga's stubbornness was only surpassed by the dwarfs, and it was this more than anything that compelled them to stay. They shunned the outside world and became insular and disconnected. They rejected the new gods and looked for something more. And something was waiting, watching. Something immeasurably old was stirred into life. Once omnipotent eyes turned their gaze on the Varangar, looked into their souls, and found what they sought to return. Hello champs and welcome once again to another one of our army breakdowns. Joining me today as always is Spoon and our special guest, the Mighty Fishbat, as we tackle the Varangar. So pull up a seat, grab a bevo, and let's get into it. How are we going, fellas? Pretty good, yourself? Good, good. Doing very well. Fishbat? Doing well over here as well. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, bevo. Is that yeah is a bevo? That, is, is that people use bevo? I use it sometimes, but short for beverage. I see. You know the Australian <laughs> thing of cutting a oh, word yes, in half and putting an O at the end. That's it. <laughs> all right, none of that. I've got my bevo ready. <laughs> okay, so let's start off as we always do with every army breakdown. The special rules of the army. So Varangar, so you know, evil alignment. They have what's called fanatical devotion. Basically, the whole army's got a higher nerve than normal, and it's already included in the profile, so we don't have to kind of use your brain to add things up. And they get a couple of other gifts of Korgan. Korgan is their god, which manipulates them, makes them do stuff. So, a unit with the gift of Korgan may choose to take one of the following options for 10 points. There's three options here uh, Brand of the Warrior, which gives the unit brutal, Guise of the Deceiver, which gives them headstrong and fury and the Mask of the Reaper, which gives the uh, unit Life Leech 1. So already off the bat, we've got higher nerve and uh, more options for just about every unit, from what I can see. Pretty nifty special abilities, I think. Mm. So let's get going in earnest. Well, uh, starting off with the infantry, uh, the first cab off the rank is the Warband. Fishbat, how about you start off? So Warband are infantry. They come in troop, regiment, and horde. Speed 5, melee 4+, plus, no range attack. Defense 4+, plus, uh, 10, 12, and 25 attacks respectively. 10, 12 nerve on the troop for 75 points. 14, 16 nerve on the regiment for 110 points. And 21, 23 nerve on the horde for 180 points. They have the option of exchanging their shields for two-handed weapons for free, which lowers their defense to 3+, plus, but gaining crushing strength one. Mm -hmm. um, looks like a fairly standard infantry selection. Melee four, defense four, speed five is all fairly average. All the attacks are average, and same with the nerve, surprisingly. The horde looks like a decent option with crushing one. I quite like it. Um, I don't know if... I don't know. Do you want it to hang around, or you want it to beat face? It's probably... Defense, yeah. Um, I think if you're wanting it to hang around, there's other options in the book which probably do the job better. It's kind of in a weird spot. Yeah, it is. I think it would still be a, a fairly decent anvil at defence for uh, mm. 25 attacks is still pretty reasonable. Mm. Yeah, I'd have um, said the opposite. If you wanted things that beat face, this list is chock full of them. It's all very yeah, punchy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but what this can do is hold down a section of the board for a little while while your other units lap around or mm. whatever you wish to do. I mean, you team this up with the magic gears. I can't remember his name. Giving Bane Chant, maybe. Bane Chant on 25 attacks mm -hmm. could be an option. It, mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't be bothering with magic items on these guys, though. Mm. It just seems you could get better point value out of other units in the list, I think. Yeah, I think if I got points left over and I've kitted out all my other units with magic items, then I may throw something onto this. But it, it's just ancillary. It's not 
needed at all, I don't think. Mm. Fishbat, your thoughts? Uh, possibly useful, like, taking Horde for the unlocks, because it's a pretty cheap way to do that. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, yeah, it's just a relatively cheap way to get some defense, like, particularly for the regiment. Um, 14, 16, 110 points. Not bad economically. Mm. The... So you've played... Sorry, you're saying you've played them, Fishbat. Have you yeah. used the Warband? Um, I've used it in Horde and Troop. Yep. Wasn't overly flash with their performance, but that's also comparing it to everything else on the list, which is very flashy and does <laughs> yeah. pull its weight. So, yeah, it's got... I, I take those guys as meat shields, really. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, the um, thought there of taking the Horde for the unlocks is probably more relevant for this army, just because a lot of the units are quite expensive because mm. they're quite good so yeah. it, it feels like it's a quite an, an elite army um, so you can mm, certainly yeah. take very few units for a 2000 point list what i will say is that with the troop if you give it the two-handed weapons for crushing one 10 attacks hitting on fours with crushing one for 75 points that is a really good little attacking throwaway unit that's going to do two or three damage mm. and it's whether you use it or chaff as chaff or um, a little hitty unit yeah, so it's too, it's too rubbish to really focus on, but it's it's just too good to ignore. But it's, it's mm. yeah, seventy five points. So yeah, <laughs> can't go wrong there. Yeah. Quite yeah. like the pole arms from the Kingdom of Memlist in that regard. Yep. Yeah. All right, that's them. Let's move on. I'll do the next unit. Uh, so I'll go down the page. Um, next unit I've got is Reavers. They're an infantry unit coming troops and regiments. Uh, speed 6, melee 4, no ranged attack, uh, defense 3, 20 and 25 attacks. Uh, these guys are fearless at 14 and 18 to route, and at 140 and 200 points. For that, you get Thunderous Charge 2 and Vicious. Which is <laughs> very scary. Yeah, I love these guys. I think they're phenomenal, even uh, in both sizes. Um, mm. I prefer to run them in troops, I think, mm-hmm. just as that, similar to uh, the Berserkers in the Dwarf lists. Yeah. It, it's that 20 attacks you just cannot ignore. Mm. And their 14's nothing to sniff at, especially when you're just comparing it to the Warband there. Yeah. That's the wave oh, of I the really regiment. Like yeah. Berserkers are always good. Yeah. They are, and these ones have Thunderous Charge too, so these are extra good. And yeah. vicious. Just keep them away from terrain. <laughs> mm. They're going to be doing the business. I love them. I think they're great. I take, I'd take at least two units of these in my list. Are you giving them items? No. <laughs> What? Just no. Right. I am. No way. Yeah, take a regiment. Give it the um, haste item, because they Speed really seven. depend on that alpha strike with the low defense and the thunder charge. Oh. Sorry, what mm. size was that regiment you're talking? Yeah, take a regiment. Give yeah. it haste. Regiment, regiment with haste. Yeah, that's probably not a bad option. Because haste doesn't cost very much, and so it's not like you're bumping them up to stupid levels. Points. Yeah. 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 I reckon these guys are brilliant though. Hmm. Don't see much point. Well, for the troop anyway, I don't see much point putting them there. That's what I would run them in anyway, troops. But even regiments, key area, 25 attacks. That extra nerve to get rid of them. Like, fearless 18. <laughs> mm. I know it's only defense 3, but there's juicier targets to shoot at on the table. Yes. I mean, but if you do shoot at them, then they become disordered and they lose that thunderous charge. I mean, it's, it's not like <laughs> they're not going to do any damage because they're still vicious. But it does take mm. the edge off it. Mm. And you might get lucky and make them run. Yeah. Um, right. Fireball will kill these guys, so keep an eye out for that. <laughs> keep away from yeah. the fireball throwers. Um, or breath weapons, but uh, Reavers, yeah, you're fine. Take lots of them. Next. Thralls. Uh, okay, these guys are Asterix. What's Asterix? Irregular. 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 <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Too much sugar for you. Yeah. Uh, these guys come in Regiment Hordes and Legions, so a step up in size from the Warband. Speed 5, Melee 5, Defense 3, 12, 25, and 30 attacks for the Legion, with a nerve of 12, 15, 19, 22, and 25, 28. So that's pretty good for the Legion. Uh, 75 points, 125, and 180 for the 60 fellas. So these guys, being irregular, aren't going to unlock anything for you. No. But 180 points, 25, 28 nerve <laughs> is pretty annoying. <laughs> yeah, it's just going to be in the way for a very long time, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to put any items on these except for maybe the Crystal Pendant if I felt like being an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I don't think they need anything. Uh, well, these are very slightly cheaper zombies that can also move at the double. Mm-hmm. Um, so 
you've got enough hitting power in the list anyway, so you probably want these for chaff. But mm. you could use a similar strategy to what people do with zombies, put the either the plus one to hit or the crushing strength item on them, and then bane chant them again. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. But again, you're spoiled for choice for crushing strength in this list. Yeah, there's so much of it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, 75 points for a regiment, that's a pretty good way to just chaff up the board very easily, get a lot of drops. Yeah, if you're just trying to annoy people by having all these uh, speed bumps. And isn't annoying people what this game is all about? <laughs> That's it, <laughs> annoying, having fun and annoying people. Um, Anything else for those guys? No. Nah. Yeah. Maybe maybe That's you might on. take a crushing on a legion or horde. Plus one yeah, you could. CS, yeah, just to make sure that they're doing something apart from getting in the way. Would you be more inclined to put that on the warband rather than the thralls? Um... Bull, 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 bull. No. Well, it depends, because if you take a regiment with your warband, that's 10 points. A horde for thralls is 125, so you're getting more nerve and more attacks for mm. not much more in Just points. you're hitting on fives for the um, the thralls versus the fours for the warband as well. And I'm also thinking psychology. So you see this big block there. Okay, great. It's just there to get in my way. And then you say, okay, but they also have crushing one. Okay, so I can't really ignore them, because uh, if they do yeah. manage to get in your flank, because you don't want to sit in the tar pit. Yeah, yeah. Well, I see your point. Thoughts, that's what we're doing. We're making thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> um, other than that, no, let's get on to the next one. Night Raiders. Um, I'll just continue on. These guys are ranged units. The first ranged units. They only come in troop size. Um, speed 5, like the other two. Melee 4, range 4, which is pretty good. Defense mm-hmm. 3, 8 attacks, 11, 13 nerve at 125 points. They have bow, so it's decent range. Pathfinder, f- yeah, Pathfinder, Stealthy, and Vanguard. If you so choose, you can exchange your bows for throwing weapons. For some reason, it's uh, specifying axes. Not that that matters any. <laughs> which gives them <laughs> piercing one, uh, but a shorter range. And that costs 15 points, so 140 points for a range 12 piercing one attack. Nah, I'm keeping bows on these guys, I think. Pathfinder mm. and Stealthy is really good. Vanguard is getting up in there. And they, ca- they can fight melee four. Yeah, not, I wouldn't say they're terrible. I reckon if, you've, to... uh, if you're facing it off against a lot of individuals or um, war machines, that the Vanguard could help get That'd them up there. That'd be very handy, yeah. Can definitely mm. see uses for them. I think building your list around them to make them useful is the, the other part. Yeah. It certainly wouldn't fit my, my list style anyway. No way. But I, mean, I think they quite they are quite usable. 125 points. Great chaff drop, even if you want to use them as chaff. How do you use them, though? For 125 points, they're not going to last very long with Defence 3 and low nerve. Yeah. And if it's not like... Terrain, if they're in terrain, they're minus 2 to hit. You kind of have to keep them in terrain. Yeah. I mean, you could t- uh, charge a war machine or a small chaff unit if you thought you could take them out. Mm. Uh, but unlike other units that I think fill a similar role. They're not nimble or have a high speed. Mm. So it's That's what I was just looking them about so fast. They're always going to suffer the minus one to hit if they're moving about because they don't have the, the nimble. Mm. Do thrown weapons suffer a move penalty? Not that I recall. They're just not... I think if you're taking thrown weapons, they don't have the mobility to use it properly, if that makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. Mm, I don't know. Uh, what, what are your thoughts, Fishburne? Speaking of the list generally, uh, the Varanger have a lot of very hard hitters, which are fairly elite, and the, a big problem the Varanger have is clearing chaff. So mm. I think that this is one of the units, and there's a couple others, which has that option of you know doing a few damage at range to try and clear that chaff. Yeah. And with the Vanguard, I think it does a decent job of that, because it gets you, what a um, with the bows, a 30-inch ability to reach out and touch to a couple of damage. Mm. So it's um, decent. I wouldn't say amazing. Again, I haven't tried them, but probably worth it if you think your opponent's going to take things like ghouls that really are going to ruin your plans unless you have a unit like this to get rid of them. Yeah, and you have to cause a couple of damage to, to cause that nerve check. Sort How of reliable? Would you, be, would you be taking throwing weapons then to make sure it's got piercing? Because What's eight the range of a throwing hole. weapon? It's only 12, but you do have the... Um, it, it's kind of like nimble in that there's no modifiers for moving and shooting for throwing weapons. I'll just confirm that there. Mm-hmm. So you're yeah, hitting more reliably. So you can move and then... It's 17 inches if you move five and then throw. Yeah. Mm. And then no, you get piercing one. Maybe. 
I think you have to deploy them correctly. You can't just put them in terrain and hope that's the right spot. <laughs> no. I still want bows just because the matchup's got to be right. Yeah, I feel like the bows is the way to go because they can't move super fast, so they've got they can do more or shoot more things without having to yeah, move but, so much. But the take home here is that this is not a premier unit. This is one that might have some utility. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure someone will be able to build a list with like ten of these guys and do really well. Yeah. If you've got any suggestions, put them in the comments section. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's move on. Fishback, you want to do this one? Blood Sworn are infantry that come in troop, regiment, and horde. Speed 5, melee 4, no ranged attack, defense 5+, plus, 10 attacks for the troop, 12 for the regiment, and 25 for the horde. The troop has nerve 11, 13 for 100 points. The regiment has 15, 17 for 140 points. And the horde has 22, 24 for 230 points. They have Crushing Strength 1 and the Gift of Corgan, and may lower their defence by 1 point to 4+, plus to get Crushing Strength 2 instead of Crushing Strength 1. That's pretty beefy. Mm, that's pretty good. Uh, I like Regiment Size for Itarp. It's mean Defence 5 and a decent nerve. 140 points is pretty good. Crushing 1. They are pretty cheap. Yeah. Crushing 1 is pretty reasonable. If you take the Horde, take yeah. lower your fence by 1, get by Crushing one. 2. <laughs> Yeah, and have 25 attacks. Mm. Especially yeah, on the regiment, if you take the... um, I forget which gift it's called, but the gift that gives you Headstrong and Fury. Guys yeah, that's the one, yeah, that's the one I would pick if I was going down that path. Frankly, that gift is head and shoulders above the other two. Mm. Mm. Yep, slap that on the regiment or the horde, and it's going to stick around. Yeah. If you put... On the horde, though, if you go brutal, then it becomes super killy. With yeah, the, but um, you've also got other super killy stuff in the list. When you've you got lots of killy stuff. Yeah, so... I think um, Fishbat might be right. Target saturation, maybe. maybe? Yeah, maybe. I just tend to think like it's a big anvil unit, so if you if you get wavered, like that chance to counter charge is massive. Mm. With with that many attacks, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair point. <laughs> <laughs> I like them. Didn't get them in my list from memory. I don't think. But just just so you know, I'm rewriting my list as we're discussing here. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> And it's, uh, yeah, it's it's hard with this army because there's so many units that you want to take. Any items you put on these guys? Extra crushing. Crushing three. That's, oh. that's the go. <laughs> <laughs> Fish bat. I think when you go crushing three, you're getting diminishing returns for your points there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I would probably, I'd get a gift, maybe. Nothing else. I think I'd leave it at the gift and that was it. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's much point because... The other units you've got to choose from for, you know, bash and face are pretty damn good anyway. Yes. Yep. All right, let's move on. Um, I'll do the next one. So the next one is the Sons of Cor... Is it Corgan? Garn. Yeah, the double Garn. A gives it a, 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 a long A. Corgan and Sons of Corgan the entire time. Uh, yeah, Cor- Corgan is 1A. Oh, right. let's go. <laughs> All right, let's go with Corgan. Corgan. <laughs> All right, so these guys come in, troops and regiments, uh, speed 5. LA 3, no ranged attack, defense 5, 15 and 20 attacks, nerve is 12 slash 14 and 16 slash 18 uh, at 155 and 220 points. These guys, um, for their special rules, are on the 25 by 25 millimeter um, base and they've got crushing strength 2 and can pick one of the gifts. Uh, the additional options, before we go any further, can also exchange their shields for two handed weapons for free and lower their defence to four to gain crushing strength three. So you give them because the crushing you one need it. item. So you want crushing four. That's that's the the top tier. <laughs> you want to hit that roof. You meta. <laughs> yeah. Crushing four on everything. And then just watch Alf shooting take it off the court. <laughs> that's it. But defence five, um, oh, we're only going to get maybe six units of these and some inspire except probably not. <laughs> Sons of Korgan are blood sworn on roids. I think they're great. So good. Yeah. The f- extra footprint's probably not that big of a deal. I don't think. Not any slightly the bigger. Size. Um, how are we taking them? What size? For me, regiment, just for the extra nerve. Mm-hmm. Like 16, 18 on a regiment, that's pretty cool. Mm. Defense 5. They're going to take a while to go away. You're paying quite a lot for that, though. I mean, they're, they're hitting hard, but um, oh, no, I'll, I prefer the troop, because if you're looking at the regiment... I'm comparing it for cost with the mounted Sons of Corgan equivalent. Mm. For another 30 points and the same footprint, you get another three speed. Yes. Which, oh, yeah. to me, that is 
no competition. If you have the points, every time you take the extra three speed. You know, six yeah. inches extra charge every time. Depends what else is in your list, though. You might need some foot troops. Yeah, You're but just going to leave what, all your if infantry you behind. Points, your cavalry can do the same thing. Mm. Unless they're all spears. Yeah, I've got a foot contingent. Oh, it doesn't mean they have to go their full move every turn. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I I went um, part foot and part cavalry, so I think I took a unit of each in my mm-hmm. list. But anyway. Um, and also, if you uh, need points, if you're trying to shave some points, uh, you could just kick your mounted sons off their horses and maybe give them haste so you the speed what, six speed instead six. of eight, and you save yeah. a couple of points. Um, but that's if you kill on this. That's if you're, you're shaving, if you need something. I can't get that character because I need 10 more points, so there might be something. <laughs> I'm reluctant to put an item on these guys. Maybe haste is okay because mm-hmm. they're good enough as is. I mean, elite, is that just overkill? Probably. I mean, you're already hitting on threes. Gift? With Are you give them or tw- yeah, I give them a gift, and that's probably, probably brutal because they're hitting on threes with crushing two straight off the bat. Yeah, a lot of attacks. Yeah, and the, the Brutal's only 10 points, so mm. that's, I, I don't know, what about you, Fishbat? Do you Have you taken these and have you put items on them? Um, I've run them, and as I mentioned, I found the mounted equivalent, Dub, just better. regiment with regiment, mounted equivalent I found a lot better, but um, yep. I've run them and they definitely do mess stuff up once they get into contact. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just closing the gap. Yeah, I've, yeah, closing the gap is the problem, um, and so you probably want to run some sort of chaff as their support. The gift I always prefer for anything in this list is the Headstrong Fury one. It's it's a really good insurance against getting that double six uh, yeah. um, against your nerve checks. Mm. Yeah. Whereas Just I think I took... Chores that they're fighting. I think I took Brutal on most of my gifts. But anyway, we'll see, mm. what, we'll, we'll see what happens when we get to lists anyway. Let's move on to... Yep. So, any other comments um, for those guys? Yeah, even though I've been comparing them to the, um, the cavalry and praising the cavalry a lot, I still really like these guys. Nothing wrong with taking these sons of Corgan. No, that's right. They're still Corgan. a solid unit. Corgan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Next. Let's move on. Dudes who have problems with balance. The Fallen. Um, these <laughs> are a large infantry unit. Regiment and hordes. Speed 8. Very fast. Trippy dudes. Uh, melee 3. Defense 5. 9 and 18 attacks. So your standard large infantry set up there. Um, nerve 13, 15, 16, 18 at 155 and 240 points. Crushing 1, height 1, and Iron Resolve, Nimble, Pathfinder. The very quick speed 8, Nimble, Pathfinder fellas. Pretty good stuff. Yes, they are pretty quick. <laughs> the Horde is very expensive, 240 reckon, points. Isn't that about the same as most monstrous infantry units? Um, the, um, the average is about 200. I know the Undead one infantry. knew about that, like um, Empire of Dust. I think the large infantry is about 245. Uh, it depends on what your... I mean, if you're just looking at, um, what do they call it? The just the enslaved guardians? Yeah. Yeah, they're 245. Yeah. But um, if okay. you... Okay. Ogre, ogre units are cheaper again, aren't they? That's yeah, that's right. That's what you're referring right. to, I'm assuming. The Ogre yeah. Horde is... Um, 200. 200. Yeah, okay. So what's the difference between that and an Ogre unit in comparison? They have CS1, don't they? Uh, they do. Uh, it's a speed, so we've got speed 8 to the Ogre's speed 6. The melee and defense is the same, the attack's the same, the height's different. Um, ogres have Brutal, crushing 1. Um, the nerve is a little lower on the Horde, 15, 17 as opposed to 16, 18. Um, and Fallen also have Iron Resolve, Nimble Pathfinder. So that's given. That's an extra 40 points for speed, Iron Resolve, Nimble Pathfinder, and one extra nerve. Which sounds about right, but it's forty. That's forty points more, so you can't take too many of these guys, and then that adds up to another unit when you're comparing it to another army. Mm. I've, yeah, I think units at this bracket for two forty, two fifty, uh, I find it hard taking more than two at the most, just because you're gonna have a really small army otherwise, or just filled with uh, rubbish troops, and then you're um, weighing the thing of okay, so I've got a couple of decent units with trash in front of them to protect them. But if my opponent has something to get around that and target my decent units and one or yeah, two go, totally then it kind of crumbles. Mm-hmm. But like we keep saying, there's so many good choices in this army. I don't know if I'd be taking, like Fishmat was saying, a whole bunch of Mountain Sons and Fallen. I think it would be one or the other for me. Mm. Oh, they've got the same speed. The height is a big thing, or could mm. be a big thing, depending on your deployment. So you've got the option of hiding these guys behind other stuff. 
if you're mm. desperate about protecting them. Yeah, the uh, hang on, the base size is going to be different, so you're still going to be able to see them behind infantry or what is it, 120? Maybe not. No, just they'll hide because they're a different base size. These guys are 40 by 40, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So it's 120 versus 125. You can actually hide them. Mm. There you go. So they're all wider. Yeah. Interesting. But it seems like they'll be they'll be sticking around. Iron resolve is a really good rule. I find it works very well, and it annoys my opponent. And like we discussed earlier, annoying is part of the game, so that's what you're <laughs> aiming for when you're yeah, building yeah. an army. <laughs> Nimble and Pathfinder with Speed 8 is also fantastic. That is pretty good. You've used these fish bat, haven't you? I have yep. indeed. I love them. There you go. Really good. Regiment or Horde? Uh, they You can take either, but they work differently. Yeah. So if you take two regiments, they're sort of working sort of together with something else as a flanking force. Mm -hmm. They can get in just really tricky spots with these sort of small base size. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you can run a horde, and it's sort of working a little bit similar to how, you know, Dracon Riders or something like that work. They, I give them the crushing strength item, so they're CS2, and yeah. they try to just manoeuvre into some horrendous spot. If we have Pathfinder and Nimble, it's pretty easy to do. And even charging something from the front, they can do horrendous damage. Mm. Yeah, still got quite a few attacks, don't they? Hitting on threes. Yeah, and uh, with the Pathfinder's speed, big. Yeah. yeah, Pathfinder's big. Nimble's massive. Nimble's it's my favourite. <laughs> Being able to run up sixteen and just turn yeah. ninety. <laughs> yeah, and pull off those tricky charges as well. The extra yeah, in your charge. Maybe that's what I need in my list. Those guys. <laughs> mm. Well, there's not a whole lot of fast units in the army. I mean, you've got the fallen, we've got the mounted fellas, or other light mounted dudes and some uh, light chaff. There's, that's about it, mm. apart from characters. So, okay. yeah, they're good. So, you say, you say you put um, crushing on them, fish pet? What would you put on them, Ben? I feel like I'd want to put crushing on them also because one. Just not enough. It, it's okay, but yeah, I want to make sure I'm doing something with them and they're not just bouncing off things. Just putting it out there. Haste. Nine. Speed nine Speed nimble. Speed nine nimble. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> But if you take haste, then you're not putting haste on any of the infantry troops, like yeah, the Reavers. True. I don't know. I think you'd have to build your list around it. So you you might want uh, you might take an all cavalry force, for example, with these guys, or you know uh, half your army as cavalry, fast moving stuff, and half infantry. Mm. I don't know. I, that's given me an idea for my list, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Good stuff. I like them. Yep. Next. Cave Trolls. These guys are irregular. They are large oh. infantry, and they come in regiment or horde. Speed 5, melee 4+, plus, no range attack. Defense 5, attacks 9 or 18 for regiment and horde. The regiment, ha regiment has 12, 15 nerve for 135 points, and the horde has 15, 18 nerve for 205 points. They have crushing strength 3 and regeneration 5+. plus. Why are they irregular? Because they don't want people taking lots of these for the unlocks, and because they're really good. The 15-18 regen 5 is so painful to try and deal with, and if you're taking these things on mass, it's, yeah, it's table flipping for the opponent. Yeah, table I suppose they are it's, it's not fun, yeah. I suppose at 205 points, they're pretty cheap for that, aren't yep. they? Yeah. I would take lots of these if I could. Crushing 3, so they're going to be punching stuff. Melee 4 is very average, but it works. Defense 5, regen 5 is key with the high nerve. Mm. Okay. I would prefer these... Item? Uh, mm. I don't think they really need it. They don't need yeah. it. Um, speed would be nice because I want them to get in there. Yeah. But that would be about it. Mm. I don't think I'd bother with any items on them. Depends yeah. where you're going to put them, though. If they're going to hang around the infantry, most of your infantry is speed 5 anyway. Breath might be nice. <laughs> Just because they can see yeah. over infantry, so if for yeah. some reason they're getting clogged up, you can still do something. And the speed 5 with the breath breath is longer than your charge distance there, yeah. which is 10. Yeah. So if you fall short, you can breath and then still kind of on them. Yeah, move Take and breathe instead of... Or... That's it. Mm. Yeah. Anything else for the case? Yeah, I don't, I don't think they'll be running if unless you get multi-charged by some heavy hitting stuff mm -hmm. but they're 205 points it's not much no that's really yeah that's really cheap yeah compared to everything else that's uh, hordes on the year anyway mm. i like them all right next is that it for cave trials yeah that's that's all the infantry and large infantry which means it is our cue to take a break 
So have our, our, all our listeners enjoy the uh, fantastic story that I'm going to weave for you. And we'll be back in a moment. But this was not a remnant of the former Celestians, those who were worshipped by the great realms of the elves, dwarves, and men of the south. This was an ancient and malevolent thing, a deity long neglected that had become nothing more than a forgotten imprint on the world. A memory of a mortal past, a mere fading shadow. Once pushed aside by the Celestians and discarded by the mortal races, it now reached out, a whisper in the ears of the priests and sorcerers of the Varangar, probing and exploring. Over time the shadow god grew bolder and the bond became stronger. Gods only survive if someone believes in them, and had found a new source of faith and mortal emotion of which to feed. The clans called their new god Korgon. And we're back from our lovely break. Everyone's grabbed a drink. Good to go. Mm-hmm. Move on to the next section. Uh, we're on to cavalry. So the first unit up is Mounted Sons of Korgan. Mm-hmm. Come in troops and regiments, speed 8, melee 3, uh, no ranged attack, defense 5, 10 and 20 attacks, nerve of 13 slash 15 or 16 slash 18 at 165 and 250 points. For that you get crushing strength 1, uh, you can pick up a gift and you get thunderous charge 2. Hmm. So you take your sons of Korgan and give them horses and then away you go. So if like what we discussed hmm. before... The little investment you get, give them speed eight, essentially. Yeah. Uh, I think you're on the mark, Fishbat. They are a little bit better. The speed is pretty good. Uh, this one screams out, give it Pathfinder. Yep. That TC2. Yeah. Have you taken multiple units, Fishbat? Or are you just taking one? At the I've taken the Did one. Did you say sorry? Just taking the one. You're taking yeah. a troop or regiment? I prefer the regiment, but the, nothing wrong with the troop there either. You just need to yeah. take on smaller targets. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because 10 attacks on threes with some decent um, stopping power. 13, 15 nerves, okay for a troop. It's 165 points, so yeah, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't think that they'll be popping after one round of shooting unless it's You'd 80 attacks unlucky. from something. <laughs> It'd be very unlucky, I think. Mm. Yeah. I prefer in regiment, I think. Pathfinder, and you're pretty much done. Yeah. Very good unit. Uh, <laughs> minus three to anyone's save is going to hurt. It's going to be like, um, or similar to, what are they called, the... Undead Knights, Soul Reaver. Yeah. When they get yeah. disordered, it kind of, uh, might be a bit of a slap fest, maybe. They've got about 20 attacks as well, don't they, from memory? They have 20 on the regiment, the difference being the Soul Reaver, Cav. Uh, six up defence, don't they? Six up defence, nerves the, lower, but it's 300 points. Ah, uh, okay, so they're yeah, more expensive. Yeah, okay. but defence six. Yeah. They've also got a worse nerve, don't they? The yeah, it's down dollar? by one. Yeah, but Life Leech 2 kind of sort of brings that back. Helps out. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'd rather Life Leech too. I mean, you could take um, Life Leech as your gift for these guys. You could Life Leech one. Or, uh, for me, I think I picked Brutal for these guys in my list, but... I feel like two troops of these with Brutal instead of one regiment might be all right. Um, Because 10 attacks is still decent on threes with their power, and then you've got Brutal, so you've got a better chance of stopping things. Mm. Um, It also just gives you an extra drop. It's... Yeah, if I'm going to take these, I'll only take one regiment. 250 points is a lot. I, I would feel uncomfortable taking more than one. Yeah, I mean, if you're adding a gift, there's another 10 points as yeah. well. So you've got the 260 or 175 a unit, depending on what you're giving him, if you're mm. giving him anything. Mm. Mm. I like. I think they're very good. For me, Pathfinder Magic Item. That's it. Also mm-hmm. got to think, because um, the other I th- almost direct comparison would be the Fallen. These guys would be easier to get in in terms of sight, because the other guys are height one, these would be height two, so you can sit them behind something and then double charge easily, or move charge one and then get these guys to charge a different unit, because they can see over the heads. Mm -hmm. So it's probably a bit more um, flexibility there, but that's if you're keeping these guys with your army, whereas the Fallen, they kind of zip off and do their own thing. Yeah. They've got a different role, I think. Yeah. Mounted Mm. Suns, they are a battering ram that's going at... 100 k's an hour. Mm. Mm. So we're giving them um, the crystal pendant and sending them forward. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Ideal. Yeah. All right, let's move you know, on. A crystal pendant is asking for them to be shot off the board <laughs> by a <laughs> <laughs> one. 
Yes. Well, what you're doing is um, you're putting some cave trolls in front. They can be the sacrificial lambs, so they're hiding them from the yokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what do we do? Uh, let's move on to some puppies, the Tundra Wolves. These are a cavalry choice, but come in troop only. Speed 9, nice and quick. Melee 4 defense, 4 10 attacks, 11 13 over 110 points, which is very reasonable. Um, these are height 1 instead of height 2. Nimble, thunderous charge 1. So fast, nippy, chuff. Wow. These guys, like comparing them to the um, Hellhounds, are very, very similar. A little bit cheaper. That's probably because they don't have fury. Hmm. Um, a few less attacks. I think they've got the Hellhounds have 15 attacks. Yes, that's right. But other than that, they're pretty much spot on. These, are, these guys are really good. Could be chaff, could be a little hitter unit to take out other chaff units, I guess. Mm. Good for lapping around, killing lone characters or war machines, even sacrificing them for war machines that are in stupid spots. Mm-hmm. I think they're great. Are you going to give them any items, though? No. <laughs> no, I, I disagree. They actually are not bad. You've got a 10-point spare. Uh, give one a flying hammer or a war bow. Just it's run surprising because something. they can get around the back. They can find something small, delicate, that you ping off one wound and it can fail nerve check. Mm-hmm. It's worth five points, I reckon. Yeah, if you got spare points. Yeah, if you got spare points. I don't think I've ever taken uh, magic items on wolves. It's, it's just... You should. It just sounds funny. That's your problem. A wolf with a, a, wolf with a bow. <laughs> Do you find something conceptually <laughs> odd about wolves throwing hammers? <laughs> that or that. <laughs> just imagine trying uh, to model that thing up, though. Yeah, that would be ridiculous. Hammer in one of the Edges wolves' meow. mouths or on a chain, <laughs> swinging it about. I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Yep, next. Fish bat, you're up. Horse Raiders. These guys are cavalry. They come in troop and regiment. Speed 8, melee 4, range 5, defense 4+, plus. 7 attacks for the troop, 14 for the regiment, 11-13 nerve for 115 points for the troop, and 14-16 nerve for 180 points for the regiment. They are nimble, they are piercing 1, they've got throwing weapons axes, and thunderous charge 1. But they can exchange their bows... Uh, sorry, they can exchange their axes for bows and lose the piercing one. Mm. Um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, being nimble, yeah, maybe I would take the bows because of the nimble. You can still move and shoot. Mm-hmm. You still move and aid, though. How much movement? Do you, what are you planning? You're, to shoot you're avoiding. Bows? That's what you're doing. You're getting um, out of charge arcs and still um, dealing damage. If you're getting a bit closer mm. with just your throwing axes, you take your. It's just a bit more risk. And if you can divert your opponent's attention onto these guys to try and catch them because they're being annoying, then they're doing their job. I don't know. I can use. I can see uses for you know the throwing at, uh, throwing weapons or the bows. Would you take these guys instead of like a troop of these guys instead of the tundra wolves? There is a very good case in which you would because the wolves are height one, the horse raiders are height two. Which so you can use the horse raiders to cover your cavalry. Hmm. And these guys have more than one hammer or bow, unlike the wolves. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> For the same point. I, I don't mind the horse raiders. I think they're a great little unit. Hmm. They'd be a pain in the ass. Uh, they don't s- scream quite so loudly like the tundra wolves running down the, the field dying. They can be handy, taking a few wounds off small chaff units. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe even a few wounds off um, something that's defense six with that piercing if you're taking the throwing weapons. I don't know. Just comparing the two, I don't know if there's a disconnect or not. I mean, the difference being one speed on the wolves and three attack. But these guys have seven ranged attack. they still got thunderous charge one each. These guys have piercing one with their throwing weapons. They're both nimble, and it's off only five points for the horse raiders, for all those for, for the ability for, for ranged. Mm. The extra three attacks on the wolves I wouldn't sniff at because, because they're so nimble, um, that adds up when you consider flanks and rears. Mm. Plus, let's say you've got, you know, you're coming over, you're charging some, you know, frail shooting unit and you have to cross a little bit of terrain. The difference between 10 and 7 attacks is the difference between getting that one point of damage and disrupting them and not as well. Yeah. I don't think I'd take them in regiments. No, I think it's troop only for me. Yep. Just at, you know, 180 points, it's getting rather expensive for what they're going to going to be achieving. Yeah. It just seems a bit pointless. And they're only range 5. I know you're not suffering to modifier for moving shooting, but yep. hitting on fives is nothing brilliant. It's not bad, but it's not great. You're only going to be doing a couple of wounds here and there. And that's all you need. Mm. Yeah. It's just a couple. 
I guess the bonus for these guys is the ability to um, have an effect in two phases of the game, whereas I know you want to put your five-point hammer or bow or whatever on the Tundra Wolves, hmm. but you've got a few more options with these guys, I think. Yes, yeah, more a uh, bit more versatile. Yeah, you can use them differently. I think it comes down to your list because of the different heights, so it depends on if you're taking more infantry base, then maybe horse raids would be better because they're not being blocked for line of sight. Yeah. Yep. Um, Tundra yeah. wolves, if you're taking more standard cavalry or larger things because they're smaller and then the other guys can see over the heads of the wolves. Mm. That's what I'm thinking anyway. They're both good. Both in good. Ways. Yeah. Let's move on. Uh, we're into large cavalry. So the first unit up is the die fang riders. These guys come in... Uh, regiments and hordes, speed 6, melee 4, defense 5, 15 and 30 attacks, uh, nerve at 13 slash 15 and 16 slash 18 at 165 and 250 points. Mm-hmm. For the special rules, you've got crushing strength 2, you can take a gift and you get strider. Pretty nifty. Uh, yes. So let's compare these guys to the mounted sons because they're both 250 points 50 for points. the larger unit. Mm -hmm. So diefang riders are considerably slower. Speed 6 to speed 8. They don't hit as well Mm -hmm. with melee 4 to melee 3. The defense is the same, but the attacks... There's a third more. There's 10 more attacks with the diefang. Mm. And the nerve's the same. The crushing is probably more reliable than the thunderous charge. Yep. Um, And strider means not being hindered at all. Yeah, which could be big. Depending on your table. I think Mm. it's the weight of the attacks that you take these guys. Yeah, oh, that's for. what's. Yeah, it's that's very all it scary. Is. 30, 30 attacks at crushing strength, too. I mean, you have one good round and you just watch a unit disappear. Hmm. I probably wouldn't take these guys in regiments. I just think the the nerves not there for such a. Uh, well, I, I say such a slow unit, but we're talking about a cavalry unit. Mm-hmm. This is more chance to shoot them off. When you're looking at the regiment, I'd compare them to the Reaver troop. Mm hmm. And it's, you're paying a few more points to get. Defense 5 rather than Defense 3, and fewer attacks. Mm. So with the Regiment, I'd prefer just to get Reavers instead. Yeah, yes, because it's the same speed, same melee. Reavers but the Horde, oh my, the Horde, that is... <laughs> if they get in... When you tell an opponent who has just decided to go near them how many attacks they've got, it is always good to see a look on their face. <laughs> Make sure you've got <laughs> a camera exactly. ready. If you've got a... Uh... The old Polaroid, that's when you take it, and then you can give them a gift at the end of the game. <laughs> With like the, the crushing strength, and I've seen this happen in a few games, is your opponent will have you know a, a dragon or something big, and they'll charge into the front of it, and these guys will usually be tough enough to take a frontal charge from you know a, a king on a dragon, yeah. or from an Abyssal Arc Fiend spoon, if you're recalling the <laughs> icon tournament I'm referring to. Mm, yes. Um, and can counter charge and do monstrous, monstrous things. Uh, what items are you giving them? For the Every gift. time, the haste. Yep, that's what I think yeah, also. Haste, haste is a big one. Um, gift wise, I like brutal on them, but I can see having that headstrong and fury could also be pretty awesome. Yes, because you don't want these guys not being able to charge. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Um, and a counter charge from. <laughs> These fellas is uh, soul destroying. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'd like to try both. I suppose it depends on what else you're running in your list as well. The other I thing mean, is with the sorry. Here you go. Uh, with the Strider, these guys are masters of obstacles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, you've got a bit of the field, and there's just an obstacle right in the dead center of the line, and it's going to be messy around there. Just put your diefang riders there. They're born for it, um, <clears throat> and they're going to have a lot of utility where otherwise you'd have to have cavalry going all the way around, even with the Pathfinder item. Yep. 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 That, that strider is invaluable in that situation. Mm. I, li- I like this setup. Well, this is what I put in my list. I put a unit of these, a horde with brutal and elite. I know they're slow. These, As um, Fishbat was saying, I'm thinking of running these guys in the middle of my force with my infantry because they're going to be about the same speed. Mm-hmm. Five speed, five speed, six can go over obstacles, they can beat stuff up, um, hold a unit up while the other unit's countercharge sort of thing. I, I think they're so strong. 250 points, whereas I would start to use your Sons of Corgan or your Fallen on the flank with Tundra Wolves and the likes. Brutal and Elite. That's putting yeah. them at, what, so, 275, 285? 
260 plus whatever elite is, which is probably 25, 25 30 points. I don't know, something about that. So they, do, they get expensive. Mm, but anything yeah. with a magic item in this list. <laughs> is expensive. <laughs> expensive. Yeah. Again, like with other very expensive units, my sentiment is to not take very many. Mm. The one, just the one, I think. I mean, you, yeah. you could just wipe it out and take three and then say, whatever. <laughs> Come at me. <laughs> Steamroller. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but then I won't play you again, so that's all right. <laughs> God, I don't particularly want to buy more of the models I'm using. So <laughs> yeah, that's another, another thing. Yep. All right. Mm. That's enough of that. Let's get into some monstrous monsters. Um, how about we start with the first one, <laughs> the Devourer. So as a monster, this thing has a speed of 7, melee 4, defense 4, 10 attacks, 14, 16, nerve at 1, 7, 5 points. It's only got crushing 1, but then you can add uh, thunderous charge to that, so thunderous charge 1, crushing 1 is not too bad. Uh, I think the best thing about this, it's got nimble, pathfinder, stealthy, and strider. It does have an option for Noxious Mist, which is basically a uh, Breath 10 and Vicious on its range attacks for 15 points extra. But 175 points base is pretty good for a very quick monster because of the Nimble Pathfinder. and no yeah. So nothing's stopping this. Stealthy is very good. <laughs> it's annoying to shoot at. Uh, the nerve's yeah, not great stops. for a monster. Yeah, but either is either's the defense. Defense 4 for a monster is not brilliant. But I'm um, just looking at, say, a giant, which is usually, what, 16, 18, around there? Mm. Um, this is just a standard regiment nerve with defense 4. So, it's, I mean, if, if facing up against breath or one decent charge, it's going. But it is quick enough to get around things. And if you give it the Noctis Mist, it, you don't have to throw it into combat. Mm. Yeah, you've got a few options to play with there, don't you? Yeah. That makes it uh, 190 for a speed 7 very... Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I'll do. I'll take that. One ninety, noxious mist on this this guy. I feel like I want two though. Run <laughs> them as, run them as a pair. Up. Yeah, it could be a possibility. Mm. Yeah, it is nearly four hundred points for twenty breath attack though. But it's also mm. how quick they are, and because it's height four, you can even just sit them behind your lines, breathing on stuff, and then zip out oh, later. That's true. And stealthy <laughs> means that they have to either magic you off because I don't think they would want to waste their shots with cover if you've got cav and then stealthy yeah as you say that i'm wondering if that'd be good things to have just hang around until the end of the game when they can go claim an objective or mm. and that's another thing mm. so they're more all-rounder in that that respect in terms of uh, scenarios mm. that's how i see it anyway one by themselves i think it's not a big threat no you could have another monster or something else that um works well with it though you don't necessarily have to have two of them oh, i think they look good yeah. as a pair yeah, it probably would. His, his and hers. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it could even help your infantry. Just sit behind your infantry. Um, I know you're not going to get the cover. It's, it's three over three different or three different, isn't it? So yeah, that's right. One versus three. I mean, it's still yeah, stealthy, it's so it's supporting well. Something. Yeah, minus one to hit. Yeah. I mean, you can hide in terrain if you really want to. Mm. I think he's all around pretty good. There's a lot of options. Yeah, two is probably better than one. If you're thinking of just sitting behind some dudes to support, I reckon a um, no, Magus on horse. Next to a unit. Next to it. Right next to it, say, uh, Sons of Corgan or something along that line. Mm. Maybe even uh, the Fallen are a bit, maybe a bit too quick. Only an inch quicker, but I don't know. I'd say I'd be putting him next to Sons of Corgan or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you want this guy to fight, always get him in a flank or rear. There's no point getting in the front. You're better off just breathing on them. No, you could join be, and assist in a combat if you needed to. Double yeah. Mm. No. <laughs> the way that I'll be playing these guys is not sitting them nearby. I'd sit maybe six to ten inches off to the side of a unit, um, trying to poke, because if the opponent has to charge this guy, they're kind of getting out of position, and if they don't charge this guy, then he's got a flank because mm. of the line of sight and the arc. Yep. Um, but that's just me. Or just take two and just run them by themselves. Or three, maybe. <laughs> if you've got some nice speakers, take three. Uh, I don't know, that's, that's all i got to say about this guy. Fishfat, what do you reckon? Yep, everything's been said about it. Good-o, let's move on then. What's next? We've got the Jabberwock. He's a monster. He's speed seven, melee four, defense five, four attacks. 13, 15 for nerve at 140 points. Only four for attacks. That you get, yeah. But, mm -hmm. wait. What? There's more. Wait, okay. Here's, here's 
He is brutal. Oh. And he's got crushing strength too. Oh no, not those four attacks with crushing too. Hang on, hang on. Oh. There's more. What? <laughs> he's got a feeding frenzy. No way. In addition to his basic four attacks, this unit has a number of additional attacks equal to the amount of damage already on the unit. Dang. Um, okay. On the unit, it is attacking in melee, in melee. I should say, sorry, yeah. at the start of the melee phase. Hmm. So It's kind of like a, a Hydra. Yeah, except the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> damage not on itself. <laughs> this way is much unit. better. <laughs> yeah, because you're not worrying about That's right. the unit disappearing off the table, your unit disappearing off the table, you're yeah. worrying about the other one. Yeah. <laughs> the nerve is low, but the defense is higher than the other fella. He's not super quick. Like, he's, I mean, speed seven, but that's it. I mean, it's like, like they can give him Pathfinder or anything extra. So you have to line it up well for the double charge. Hmm. But imagine he, hitting a horde with this thing that's oh. taken a round of combat. <laughs> What do you mean you got a legion? That be... Yeah, that, that's 34 attacks. What do, you, what do you mean I hit you in the rear? <laughs> and crushing two is brutal. <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah, no. A big, <laughs> a big legion a big legion or a horde hitting the flank or rear mm. with a bit of damage on them. That would be hilarious. Where's my bucket at? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I've always liked the Jabberwock or Jabberwocky um, as a kid. Just the idea of this forest hunter that kind of makes people go insane um mm. so i would take it just for that if i probably model up a, a different kind of monster with ugliness onto it so i'd probably mm. take one of these guys it's pretty cheap 140 yeah it's very cheap and it's not it's like he's got other options list. to bump up the point so yeah I like but will you be taking this if you're taking three devourers is there the room <laughs> <laughs> and do all the devourers have breath weapons mm. yes yes <laughs> of course <laughs> all right Let's move on. All right, what's uh, next? Fishbat, you're up. Cavern Dweller. He is a monster. He has speed 6, melee 3, range, none at all, defense 5, attacks d6 plus 6, nerve 6 to 18, and 205 points. He's got crushing strength 3, regeneration 5 plus, and strider. Cave Dwelling Giants. That's what it screams. Uh, similar attack style with the d6 and then the set number there. Nerves very similar. Points are very similar. He hits better. He's not as fast, I don't think. Giants are a bit faster than that, aren't they? Speed um, 7, usually. Yeah. yeah, speed 7. Yeah. Defense 5 is good. Crushing 3 is good. Regen 5 is the thing that makes me want to take lots of them. And Strider is like a giant. Oh, the three monsters, and they're all good. <laughs> Spoiled for choice. Funnily enough, this guy is almost... is very, very similar to a Cave Troll Horde. Yes. Same defensive abilities, except one higher Waver Nerve. Um, same defense, same regen, same points. Fewer attacks. Hmm. Fewer attacks, um, but a smaller base as well. Mm. So it can fit with others when you're combi charging. Mm. Yeah. Great for combo charges because of the height. And the strider. Yeah. But mm. you have to uh, yeah, you have to line it up well because of the speed six. So it's either going to be at the front of your lines because I don't think you'll get it um, if they're sitting behind some fellas unless you're counter charging. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Still think he's good in his own right. I like a giant. Giants are always good. And with regen. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. big. Yeah. Tears three. Still got a reasonable amount of attacks. Even at seven attacks, that's not bad. Could be worse. Yeah, and the... You could miss with everything. <laughs> you could, <laughs> as has happened before. Um, and they hit better than a giant, which are usually melee four. Four, yeah. Yeah, pretty good. Hmm. You run, you run these before, Fishbat, a cavern dweller? Yep, big fan of the cavern dweller. He has all the defensive bonuses of a giant, plus the regen five plus, so he's very solid. And with a small, you know, sort of base, is a good little way in a very aggressive army to have something that can fight and does have the crossing strength three for the can opening, but can also, you know, hold its ground pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, Strider means it's something else that can cross those obstacles or, you know, things of that nature. I'll mention this later, but I like to have it running around with the Chieftain on Diaphang. Mm-hmm. Yeah, big fan. Which which of the three monsters stands out the most? Yeah. I'd say the Cavern Dweller, just because it's always going to be useful. Mm-hmm. You kind of have to set um, off the, the other Jabberwock two. Jabberwock and the Devourer are a bit more conditional. Yes. Mm, Jabberwock for me is very situational, I think. And it is 65 points cheaper, though. Yeah. I think I'd be picking the Dweller. Even, oh, Devourer. <laughs> comes down to army list. You're giving me too many options here. <laughs> yeah, I don't that's think I it. even put a monster in my list. So, oh, so you, you couldn't decide, just threw it all out. Bugger it. Yeah, bugger it. Yeah, I think my original list also doesn't yeah. have any monsters, so I need to rectify that right now. 
Let's move on to the next unit. Or are we having a break? No, we've this got... Next? This next one is the Magus Conclave. It's the only war engine in the list. Um, it's not really a war engine, but it is, sort of. Um, this thing is speed 5, range 4. No melee on this thing. Defense 3, only 2 attacks at 11, 13, and 100 points, which is fairly average, I guess. 36 inch range, so it's not as long as your standard stuff. Blast D3, which is okay. Individual piercing 2, which is okay. I think the kicker here, it has the option of a Famulus, which is elite essentially for 10 points. So range 4, 2 attacks with elite, I think is fairly reliable. I don't know. I am denied about these guys. I think they're reasonable. Yeah. Just, they just kind of sit there, though. Com- it's... Yeah, it com- comes down to your army list, I think. And I compare it to the um, the character that we'll get to later. Mm. But I like the ability of having a volume of shots. I know this is a blast, mm. but I prefer. I think I prefer the volume over just the, the two shots that do that, blast D3. Yeah, I mean, you could do two damage. You could do six yeah. at most. Yeah, I mean... I think I put one of these in my list from memory, but... It's I... just that, that extra range, because if you're taking a more infantry base, it's a lot slower. These things start yeah. doing damage from the get-go. Maybe a couple of them might be worthwhile, you know, like a couple of stones, similar to taking a couple of thro- uh, stone throwers, throwing mm-hmm. stowers. Throwing stowers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like a good stower. <laughs> yeah, I've got all these thrones, and I don't know where to put them. <laughs> You just a guy with a big uh, warehouse. <laughs> All right. Any any further thoughts on that? This is another one of those guys who is around to, I suppose, clear out the chaff. Yeah. And with the three foot range, he's you know got the tools to do it. Mm-hmm. But again, the the two shots on a four plus, even with elite, means he's not that reliable. I would have thought at least one of them's hitting. Yeah. Uh, the, the other thing to consider is to being height one. If you're hidden behind your infantry, it's only going to be large infantry and bigger that you're shooting anyway. Yeah. So you're not going to be seeing infantry. What are you going to take out with it? It's piercing two, so I suppose you're looking at monsters and or the likes anyway, aren't you? fast cavalry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, with the low nerve. Yeah, so the things that you can't normally catch with your your troops, these guys infantry. can slap. Yeah, yeah well, there you go. That might um, work. Yeah. Okay, right. Whatever. Let's go into the break before our last... <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Back soon. This primeval being, both fickle and cruel, began to craft a new culture in its image, and the Varanga started to venture out once more, south through the frozen wastes on the great expeditions by land and sea, raiding the fringes of every great empire. Word spread, and coastal settlements feared the inevitable raids of the warlike and bloodthirsty savages. The clans began to thrive, and their gods swelled with power, wreaking havoc in the wake of the chaos winter was sowing. As the infant sea rushed in to drown the realms of men, engulfing the Republic and drawing the Age of Ice to an end, the world was in upheaval. Gorgon was using all its nascent power to protect its grip on the mortal realm as the world around it took on a new shape and the clan's faith was wavering. The gods saw courage and confidence replaced by fear and uncertainty. It had woken into a new world, a world of new gods and rivalries, and it would not give up its precarious foothold so easily. Its mortal followers must be absolute in their belief, purpose, and worship. Alrighty, coming into the last section of our army review, we are coming to the heroes and living legends. So, next up we have the Cursed Sun. So, the uh, sun that didn't get much attention. Speed 6, melee 3, defense 4. 7 attacks with... uh, Fearless 13, 130 points. He's on a 25mm base instead of your standard 20. That doesn't really make much difference. Crushing 2, individual and vicious. He's not bad little punchy fella. Melee 3, 7 attacks, crushing 2, vicious is pretty good. Doesn't inspire, so keep that in mind. And no option to mount this fella up, so he's pretty static. You can, think, can make him fly. Yeah, fly's not a bad option for, what is it, 40, 45 points? I don't, can't remember what the wings were. It's been so long. So you're just uh, under 200 Flying points. is 40 points, I think, for the wings of Honeymoes. Yeah, 170. Mm. Also doesn't have an option to take a gift, I just realised. He's cursed. Well, that's he's cursed. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, just reading uh, the flavour uh, text, it says, Very rarely a son of Korgan succumbs to the power of the Mask of the Reaper. 
So maybe that's why he can't take uh, right. any other thing. Read the fluff, Spoonie. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think this guy's in a funny spot. Yes. Give him wings, he becomes pretty usable. He's certainly don't taking out wings. small dudes. Yeah. Um, the only thing I can think of, give him inspiring, keep him behind your lines and inspire, but why wouldn't you just take the... That's right. Um, best B guy. Right. The other thing um, in my list, I was really struggling because I took quite a an aggressive, well, I think it's an aggressive lift that I'll probably alter a little later. Um, maybe he could hang behind the lines to stop flyers getting behind because he's got that 360 charge. Is it's the he... only thing I can think of. A lot of the flyers aren't super small, though, so will this guy do enough? All he's got to do, well, the way I look at it, all he's got to do, depending on what rules pack you're playing, I'm thinking of disordering him so he's not flapping around everywhere. But he's still mm-hmm. recharging stuff. Down. Yeah, not if he gets charged first. Yeah, but he's an individual, so you can just steam all over him. It's defence four. Yeah, no, it comes down to placement, obviously, but just stop, try and stop flyers getting behind. I can't think of <laughs> if anything really good use for him. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he is a decent little force multiplier. If, you keep him up, if you're advancing with infantry, you know, seven attacks, he's going to add three or four damage to whatever he charges, and because of the small base, he fits in with anything else. It's 130 points. So I you want to take a jubble else? walk instead for 10 points more and speed yeah. seven and can see over fellas. I don't know. I see where Fishbat's coming from. Yeah. But he's just in that... He's very awkward in this list, I think. I would think the flying or nothing, just because then he's a character sniper, a war machine hunter, and very, very small compared to um, the wolves or reavers. Well, sorry, reapers. Is that what they're called? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's all I would use him for. I don't know. I don't think too much of him, to be honest. Mm. It, it just seems a little too expensive for what I would use him for, anyway. I, I think the point's right, just because he's merely 3-7 attacks crushing two with Vicious. Yeah. Oh, he's, yeah, he's no slouch in combat, that's for sure. But then you also have to watch out because he's a defense for nerve 13. But then he's height 1, mm. so he should be harder to see. And he's individual, so you're not going to want to shoot at him unless it's magic. It's it's a weird spot. I'm sure you can mm. use him to good effect, someone. Maybe. <laughs> you <laughs> need me. a specific job for him. Yeah. Yeah. He's not a generalist. No. Uh, let's move on. Okay. Because it's ir- irritating me talking about it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's up next? Magus, yeah. hero infantry. Speed 5, melee 5, no ranged, defense 5, 1 attack, 11, 13 nerve, 85 points. He's individual, he has a lightning bolt 4, and he has some options as well. He can get 5 or 12 for 25 points, Bane Chant 2 for 15 points, a Famulus for 15 points, giving him elite when casting spells, and for another 15 points, you can mount him and changing his speed to 8. Hmm, that's only 15 points. Which is pretty good. This guy's fairly versatile. Yeah. He's got quite a few roles. I don't know if um, Bane Chant... Is Bane Chant really worth it unless you're putting it on those big anvil units? A lot of your stuff has crushing. Yeah. It seems like a bit of overkill. I mean, unless you're taking... Well, I can't even remember what they're called, those big units. One of the Warband thralls. Mm -hmm. I don't see much point in Bane Chant. Fireball and Lightning Bolt together, pretty good. You get the choice. The Elite... Mm. Yeah, maybe. And there's no. I don't know. He starts to add up. It's not like there's uh, lots of shooting that you can give piercing to either. Yeah. Go. Oh, you. You got night raiders. Um. You could give additional piercing to your, your horsemen. What are they called? The ones that have thrown up horse raiders. So you're if they're putting this guy on a mount as well and giving him bane chant to give yeah. them an extra piercing. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of stuff. You could um, bane chant your big monster before. What was he called? Devourer. Mm-hmm. Um, the Devourer has got vicious on his range attacks. I just think Bane Chant's a bit of overkill. Yeah. Anyway, everything's pretty hitty. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. So Fireball gives you the option against bigger units and Lightning Bolt against the higher armoured units. Mm. But if in a tournament setting, I believe wouldn't take Fireball. If you know, if, if, unless you're playing against a, a mate and you know he's got lots of larger units that a Fireball would work well. 25 points, meh, I'll just take another Magus, and so I've got Lightning 8 instead. Yeah. I think the only item I would give this guy is inspiring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's it. Let's move on. Okay, what's next? The Chieftain. Uh, this guy is speed 5, melee 3, no range attack, defense 5, 5 attacks, 14 slash 16 for nerve at 160 points. It's got a base size of 25 by 25, crushing strength 2, 
He's elite. He can take a gift. He's individual and inspiring. You can also mount him on a pony to go to speed eight for mm. 20 points. This guy, I think, is much more usable than his cursed bro. <laughs> cursed son. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, crushing two, so they're the same there. This guy inspires, the other fella doesn't. This guy's elite, the other guy's vicious. This guy can take gift. a gift, so what are you taking? For me, my setup in my list was Vanguard item on a horse with... What did I give him? I think I gave him Life Leech just to keep him alive. Mm-hmm. 14, 16 is okay? Yeah. And what are you doing with him? Depends on the army you come up against. He can either add to a combat or he can Vanguard to take out or disrupt a shooting unit. It depends what you come up against. Mm. Only five attacks. He's only got to do one wound. But he's not... Defense. He's not cheap just to disorder some... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's very expensive. I want to try him out. I've got him in my list. So how much is a Vanguard item? Boots of seven leagues. I think it might be 30, 35 points. So it gets up there. 35 About points, 20 points it? plus 20. So it's an extra 55 points. So 205... 215 points mm. for that. No. Yep. No. <laughs> you also got to remember his speed eight. Does an individual give him nimble as well? Does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it can be a pain in the ass in the backfield as well if he needs to be. Mm. I like him. And you're allowed to like him. <laughs> I will. Good, He's fine. better than the cursed bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, this guy isn't cursed, so that's something. What do you reckon, Fish Fat? Doesn't do it for me, I'm sorry. Mm, yeah. Um, you're paying the extra points. I'm not seeing what you're getting. Um, the it's inspiring. Defense 5, 14, 16. Like, it, it might... Yeah, that's actually reasonably defensive. Mm. So, you know, good little roadblock. Inspiring, you know, it's easy to find a hero and chuck a talisman on him and get it cheaper than this. Yeah, I don't know, for, for 180 with the, the mount, maybe it is just a cheap way to hold the line, inspire, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But if, you, if you're wanting to, you know, put on items to make him really fast, I'd say you're probably getting to 200 points-ish. It's just better to go for Herger, which we'll get to later. Yeah, I agree. So because Fishbat and I don't think he's that great, that means your opinion is invalid, Spoon. Okay, next is the Chieftain right, on end, Dire end of, <laughs> end of podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so because Chieftain is it's not all that great by himself, he, he's got a pony, but sometimes he just wants a really, really big pony or a Dire Fang. You can give him that. Chieftain on Dire Fang is a speed 6, oh, melee 3, defense 5, 10 attacks, 15, 17, nerve 2, 20 points. Crushing 3, Elite, Gift of Korgan, Inspiring Strider. So you put him on a Dire Fang and he's jogging instead of walking. <laughs> They're not very fast, these things. It's a unit in himself, though. Yes. 10 attacks with Elite, Crushing 3, hitting on 3s is pretty good. It's kind of like oh, a monster. I quite like this guy. Yeah, An is. inspiring monster. With height 3, because he's large cab, rather than height 4. Any gifts? I like Brutal or... What did I give? I think I gave this guy, in my list, I think I gave him Regen. Life, uh, the so re- Regen re- item, yep. Yeah, Regen. I don't know what um, gift I gave him that. Couldn't tell you. So wait till we get to the list, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I like Regen on him, just so he's getting back his wounds that he's taking. I know 15, 17 is quite a large nerve value, but mm. it was the payoff for not taking Defense 6. Mm. Defense 6 mm. would be good. Yeah. It is hard but to it's kill, very maybe. expensive. Yeah. If you think about each army that has a you know flying lord on a dragon type choice, mm. your elves, um, Varinger, abyssal dwarfs, you know you know what I mean. It's you know three hundred plus points, ten attacks, melee three, elite or vicious, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. This is that, but speed six instead of flying, and you save a hundred points. Yeah, I think that and the biggest so if, downfall is the speed six. But yeah, but it's for the same speed as less. the other. Yeah. So if you're a player who let's say. You, you don't have opportunities to... You're either a little bit crap and it's too hard to use your flying heroes and not get caught up, mm-hmm. um, or your opponents are very, very good and they just don't let you. Mm-hmm. It's really good to have the Chieftain on Diafang because if you're going to only have opportunities to track the front anyway, might as well do it cheaper. Mm. Um, I love this unit. I really, really do. Very versatile. Um, very punchy. He can reliably put out 6-7 damage. I quite yeah. like And the small base size means I put him next to the... Um, Cavern Dweller as well. Mm-hmm. Mm. They're both Strider. They sit somewhere behind an obstacle, go up together, 
punch things, have a good time. Yeah, he's very much a, an inspiring monster. He is, and he inspires me on a personal level. <laughs> I love He's it. very inspirational. <laughs> he is. Good. Yeah, All know. right, next. So what happens when you forget to wear oven mitts and you pick up a pot of boiling water? You get scalded. Or a scald is the next hero. <laughs> that was really bad. He's <laughs> speed 5, melee 5, range 4, defense 4, 1 attack, 11, 13, nerve, 60 points. Um, individual, inspiring, piercing 1 with throwing weapons, axes, yar. You can put him on a pony for 15 points, that gives him speed 8, change to hero cav, like a standard bearer for yeah, other armies. Army standard, keep him cheap, maybe give him grenades or something if you really want to. Yeah, or plus 1 to hit in combat, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever floats your boat, it's all good. Uh, for, for a um, Varanga unit or character, melee 5 seems very out of place. If you're fighting a guy with one attack in close combat, there's something wrong anyway. Well, I guess if we read the flavor text, the Skulls record the heroic feats of the Varanga during battle. So these are the guys who just write stuff in books. That's well, I think it'd have to be like a bard singer type a bit more. Like oral history kind of guy. With an axe that he throws at people with his offhand, because then it's funnier. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Keep them cheap. Yeah. They're for inspiring, that's it. If you've got like, lots of mounted units... Also put make uh, um, breath magic item as well. Yeah. I do like my fast dudes with breathing. I like to have my dudes breathe. That's 75 points for him on his... And speeding about... Yeah. Uh, what's a breath? 30? Yep. Oh, yeah, about that. A breath 10? Yeah. That's good. I'd do that. Other than that, no. Nah. Yeah, I'd just keep him as cheap as possible. All right. Uh, we've got the He's also King a good on... sacrificial pawn sort of guy. Um, yeah, it could be too. So you end, your points. opponent set up you know, two or three really good charges that you really don't want to take. Your squad goes out and blocks one of them, about 10 inches in front of your lines. Mm. Yes, because he yes. will die and they will overrun. <laughs> so you don't want to overrun into your units. Nope. Next, we've got the King on Chimera. This guy is a hero monster. He is speed 10, melee 3, no ranged attack, defense 5, 10 attacks, 18 slash 20 for nerve, uh, 310 points. For that, you get breath attack 10, CS3, elite, fly. You can take a gift, and he is inspiring. It's pretty mm. good. He's very expensive. Yeah, but he's the same cost as any other flipping dragon. 310, it's hard for me to stomach. It, you're not going to, I mean, you can't give him defense 6, but then it, it's getting into stupid levels of points. But he's the same cost, even if you give him Defence 6, he's the same cost as um, an Archfiend. He's cheaper. Mm. By the time you care out an Archfiend, he is like 360 points. Or she, whichever. <laughs> it. Whichever gender, which, which, yeah, whichever gender your Archfiend may be. Is the same cost as the Dragon Kindred Lord for the Elves. Hmm. And what's the difference? And the the Elven one has another 5 breath attack, and the King on Chimera has an extra nerve. Mm. There you go. And if you kid out the uh, Archfiend, he's got Lightning Bolt 5. Yep. And hits different, harder different with Crushing Two, Thunderous 2, and Vicious. But Elite's the same, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I think... It's much of a muchness. Mm -hmm. It's probably too expensive for my taste. It depends what else you got in in your list as well, is the other thing too. I mean, you'd start taking him and a Chieftain on a die thing, and you're already down 500 points. Yeah, that's a quarter of your army. Yeah, in two figures. Hmm. Yep, an expensive thing in a list of expensive things. But this is at least a very, very fast expensive thing. <laughs> and if if you don't take this, this is your only access to a flying threat that can get flanks. Yeah, I like him. Couldn't fit any in my list. I couldn't fit any flipping monsters in my list. <laughs> you could. You just didn't want to make the sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. All right. I like him. I think he's quite good. Yeah. Um, and before we move on, magic items, I think it's pretty easy to pick this one. Defense 6. Yeah, he's not yeah. dying with Defense 6 unless they just mm -hmm. focus because it's high nerve and he can get yeah. out of range of just about everything. Mm -hmm. All right, All right. move on. Who's next? Uh, Fishbat, you've had experience with Urge of the Fallen in brackets 1. How about you look, tell us about them? So those who have listened to the review of the Abyssal Dwarfs will remember the glowing praise that Basusu got. <laughs> yeah. This is Basusu's wife and she is very, very similar. Uh, in what she does and her role. Um, so, speed 10 flying, uh, melee 3, no ranged, defense 6, however, so the defense 5 for Basusu. Mm -hmm. uh, 7 attacks, 15, 17 nerve, 260 points. So, a pretty big point sink. Uh, mm. You get crushing 2, elite, fly, iron resolve, individual, inspiring, life leech 1, 
and Judgment, a special rule. Ooh. So Judgment of Kogan, uh, if you take Herja, you can choose a infantry unit in your army, including a hero infantry before the game starts. And when it routes, your opponent rolls dice on a 4+. plus. It is healed D6 plus 3 damage and comes back to life instead of dying. Works once, once per game. 50-50 chance of something just popping back coming up. Back. Not to be dependent upon. It's more like icing on the cake yeah. rather than the cake. Yeah. I do love my Bassy Boo and Herja, just for a few points more, has some pretty nifty rules. I like that um, it's inspiring everyone instead of just inspiring gargoyles for Bassy. Seven attacks is, mm. eh, defense six is pretty good. No regen, but has Iron Resolve instead with Life Leech. Mm -hmm. So if it's in, if she's in combat, reliably getting two damage back a turn. Mm. I find that the base size is the, is the biggest thing out of all of these, just because you can fit into so many spots and yeah. zip out and punch people and then zip back if they didn't die. So, yeah. I think out of all the units in this list, Herja, I think, is the premier unit for the Varangur. Mm. She is amazing. She does everything. Okay, no, she doesn't do everything. I'm, I'm exaggerating. She does a few things. She can tie up any unit you don't like. Mm -hmm. With Defense 6, they need to be serious to get her out of the way. Yeah, 15, 17. She so can... Sons of, Sons of Corgan with Crushing Strength 4, right? Yes. Of course. Serious. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so not those. But let's say your, your opponent's got some um, flying units. She'll fly right over, disorder them, and then she can get out of the way. I've actually seen Herja. Uh, there's a game where she beat down by herself a horde of Dracon Riders. <laughs> um, and she... That wasn't particularly hot rolls either. But, you know, over a few turns, yeah, she'd get her health back and she'd continue doing damage. So she can lay a beat down as well mm. as, you know, just projecting a threat everywhere. Mm. Wins the grind. Wins the grind. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Very nifty. Can't give them other items because living legend and whatnot. So let's move on to the next one. Mm. The last one. Very last entry for the army. What is it? Cave Troll King. In parentheses one. Uh, speed five. Melee three. Defense five. 7 attacks, 15, 18 nerve at 200 points. He has a big shield, so it just gives him, what, defense 6 in the front. That's a nice boost, I guess. Defense 5 is nothing to sniff at. Breath 10, crushing 3, nimble, regen 5. Very inspiring to cave trolls only. I think he's good by himself, though. He's pretty good by himself. Small base size. I think, what's the unit worth? The unit's about the same. 205 or something, isn't it? Yeah, 205 for the unit. You just get getting less attacks than new attacks as you go. He has seven, seven compared to 18 of a horde of cave trolls. Yeah. But breath, I'd be breathing on things and then smashing if need be. The very inspiring to cave trolls only is interesting. I mean, how far away are you keeping him from the trolls or are you taking many irregular units that are going to fill up your army very quickly? <laughs> the second one. It's like you're <laughs> taking it. two, units, two units of cave troll or maybe they're hordes for example so there's 410 points what's he worth 200 points so you're six, 610 and say for a quarter of your army in three units yeah that, that means you're doing things right isn't it <laughs> yeah. I, so, yeah. I think if you take I'm literally painting that up right now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I take this guy I, I feel like I would want to take two hordes of cave trolls um, and that'll be the, the main bulk of your infantry and then some fast stuff around it. You don't have to be too pedantic about your inspiring there if this guy's here with his 9-inch bubble, and he can breathe on stuff, so if he doesn't get in with the charge, you just bleh, with your bad breath and hurt some stuff, and then get in for a charge next. Defense 6 in the front with regen 5 is a good deterrent to shoot at him. Um, uh, he's okay. Yeah, I don't think he's, he's bad at all. He's very good for 200 points. The thing that worries me, I guess, the most, just from an army construction point of view, is that you got 410 points that offer zero unlocks. Yeah, that's why you take other stuff to unlock. You take... Yeah, um, just saying. Like, it's a lot of points to... Regiments of if you're, uh, sons. If, you did, if you're dead set on trolls, go nuts, I guess. I wouldn't be going down that path, but that's me. <laughs> yeah, if you're not taking cave trolls, there's no point taking this guy because you just take a monster instead, I think. Uh, yep. he's, he's just not yep. very fast. Mm. I don't not know. for me. Any thoughts, Fishbat? Lukewarm on him. I'd, I'd only take him if I was going, like, heavy doubling down on trolls. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's it. 
That's it. Literally, that is it. That, that is the end of our it. review. Okay. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go for our last break, and when we come back, we'll discuss allies for the Varangar and run through um, some of example lists. So until then, um, we'll see you soon. Those in Korgan's favour, the champions and trusted lieutenants of this order, have strange and wonderful gifts bestowed upon them, but those that cause displeasure are quickly cast aside. The clan warriors' battle skills are constantly owned against each other, and in minor raids and border clashes with both the realms and kingdoms to the south, other scattered northern clans, and more recently, the mysterious northern alliance. Wary of the revenge, the wicked ones are surely plotting. The three-faced god bides its time, growing ever stronger as the clans begin their slow and insidious spread into the world, and preparing to revel in a maelstrom of havoc. Okay, we're back for the home stretch. Uh, let's kick things off with thoughts about allies and do the Varanga need them? If so, what would you take? For thematic reasons, you wouldn't take anything from the forces of the Abyss because these guys hate them. So that's out of the question <laughs> for me personally. What are the Varanga missing that we can plug holes with? Shooting. Decent yeah, shooting. shooting. So what are we doing? Goblins? I would mass have, goblins? I would even say, yeah, I would say cheap um, infantry, like goblin. What are they called? Spitters? Spitters are the called? dudes with bows. Yep, if you take a regiment yeah. of them, you can take a big rocks thrower. I know it's sharp like stick. really, really unusual to see this done on the list, but I reckon if you even chose the ogre shooters, they could really add a lot to this list. Mm. To the... And if you aren't taking the, uh, aren't playing a tournament, I think uh, the plus one shooting might be okay for that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's a good idea. I've never, <laughs> I didn't think of that. But now that you say it, that could really put a lot of pain down. Yeah, hmm. <laughs> I think you're onto something. All right. So wow. I don't know about Night Stalkers. I mean, we've, they've got some decent shooting for their troops. The Spectres have Firebolts range four with piercing, and they're stealthy with Mind Thirst, and they're only 140 points. Mm. Is 18 inches sure. enough? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. The rest of your force is going to be wanting to get up there really quickly anyway. Mm. So is it really going to matter? Mm. Are they going to be more worried about the, the, the few shots from your Night Stalkers or the big units of Diafang and Sons of Korg and whatever else is coming at you? They'll yeah. be more scared of the... I don't know. Night Stalkers are always a good ally because you don't need... The, inspiring. Inspiring. I think if you can find some cheap things... That might be something to fill out the, the ranks. Yeah, I reckon goblins are your best, probably your best fit. Maybe Ratkin. Ah, oh, yes. Ratkin could do it. They're fairly cheap. And you could switch out your chaff units for Ratkin chaff units and then get the shooting units in there. Like mm -hmm. the um, warp, warp, uh, not warp fire teams. That's Warhammer, sorry. <laughs> um, what were they called? The weapon teams. Weapon teams, yeah. Uh, they're a war engine, so you need to unlock them with something... Yeah, so do the cheap units of um, clan rats or whatever they're called. Or if you take warriors, is as close as you're going to get. Yeah, so a go regiment warriors, is 90 base. Points. How much? 90 for a regiment. Ah, oh, ripped off. Yeah. What a gobblers. <laughs> Tunnel slaves. Oh, that might, we might need to get a little bit of a riddle on. Oh, right, okay. Uh, it's nearly 10 o'clock. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yep. All right. Allies, probably not needed unless you're going to go cheap shooting route. Yeah. Next, let's get into some example lists. Yes, all right. Who's going first? Have you prepared one earlier, Fishbat? I have indeed. Um, so last time I was here, I was accused of bringing a troll list <laughs> with my um, ogre list, which had all of the um, uh, boom wagons. Uh huh. Well, I, I really don't think that was a troll list, but this one is because it's got two hordes of warband and then seven hordes of trolls and the cobra. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, that was a joke. My actual yeah. list. Uh, is a troop of warband, and I've also got Herja in the list, and so the judgment goes on the warband. On the troop. So 75 points, they're just a really good little bit, you know, chaff, a horde of the fallen with the brew of strength, two troops of tundra wolves, one mm -hmm. has the warbow, mm -hmm. uh, mounted sons of Corgan regiment with headstrong fury, yep. dire fang riders horde with brew of haste, headstrong fury, yep. cavern dweller, magus conclave with famulus, mm-hmm. Chief on Diafang with Headstrong Fury, uh, Scold with Breath Weapon, and Herger of the Fallen. Okay. Hmm. So a pretty elite 
list. Yeah. Interesting. That's pretty similar to what you ran against um, me at that mic on. Is it it's not? It's identical to what I ran against you. <laughs> oh, there, there you go. Sounded very similar. <laughs> How did that game go, list? by the way? Yeah, you're a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Come down to the last dice roll. I had him at turn six, friggin' turn seven. Towering friggin'. intellectual. No, it was a dice roll. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, it's 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 very punchy. Um, it's you, you really need the wolves in there and Herger to manage threats. Mm. Um, because you've got only a few punching things, you need to manage threats properly, or else you'll get flanked and overwhelmed and mm. all that sort of thing. Um, mm. But if you do manage that properly, you will just beat everything down into submission. Yes. Yeah. It's a pretty flexible list. A lot of fast-moving units, too. Got to mm. be very careful yeah, I've, against it, anyway. In my list, I've gone kind of similar. I've tried to go as fast as I can without being too annoying. What I've done is a core of Sons of Korgan, so a regiment of those, um, and they'll be supported by a Magus with the Inspiring Talisman, and they'll sit there and pew-pew fellas. I've got some Reavers to sit beside them, and zip forward, maybe get a flank if I'm lucky. Uh, just a troop of them and a regiment of the Fallen. They're my um, war machine hunters and dudes who get around the back if they can. Mm -hmm. I've then got a second force of two troops of wolves. One of them has the Mace of Crushing, because that's the best. <laughs> and these guys go in front of my regiment of Mounted Sons and my horde of Diafangs with the Rue of Haste. So they're just uh, wolf shields that throw hammers every mm -hmm. now and then. This next unit, they can either sit with the core or run up with the faster fellas. Two devourers, both with breath and vicious on their ranged. Yep. Now that force doesn't have any inspiring yet, which is why I've taken Herger the Fallen. And this, the judgment will either go on the Diafang or the Mounted Sons because they're expensive and they could deny points. Be, it it has to be infantry. Ah, infantry. Uh, infantry. Oh, yeah. oh, okay, so they'd be going on my sons because they're the most expensive of the infantry. Yep. A um, lot of attacks, if they come back, then eek, they're yep. going to be a pain in the neck. So very inspiring mm -hmm. light with only two characters, but um, I think would be fairly flexible because it's fast where it needs to be and it's got a bit of punch in the centre. Mm -hmm. That's my thinking anyway. Mm. Yeah, Not a lot of ranged either, just a couple of lightning bolts. Yeah, but I'll be thinking I'll be getting into combat. But yeah. Anyway, what have you got? Uh, I am running a regiment of the Sons of Corgan. I gave him Brutal, uh, no other magic item. I've got, this is either chaff slash supporting units. I've got two troops of Reavers, mm -hmm. followed by another section of chaff, two troops of Tundra Wolves. Mm -hmm. Then I've got Mounted Sons Regiment. They've got Brutal, and I gave him Caterpillar Potion to keep that Thunderous Charge 2 up if I'm wandering through the forest. Horse Raiders, um, similar to your Tundra Wolves, the ability to shoot is a bonus, I guess. can get in the way, uh, take a couple of wounds off here and there. It's only a troop for them. Mm. Then I've got a horde of Diafang Riders. I gave them Brutal as well and Elite. Um, would possibly give them speed, not sure. Speed 7 is probably a bit better, but anyway. Move on. I've got the Conclave. Didn't have the points to give it. Is that, that one the reroll or is it the, the elite. normal Vegas? Elite, is it? Yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't give it that anyway. It's just base. Uh, then I've got my Vanguarding Chieftain on a horse. Uh, I gave him Life Leech 1 as the gift, and the big Chieftain on the Diafang gave him Brutal and Regen 5 up. Got a lot of smaller units with yeah. uh, Reavers and Wolves and Horse Raiders. I'd consider... I didn't originally. Let's finish off the list. I added them in. A, an extra unit of um, Reavers and stuff. But I'd consider... I was thinking of getting a second unit of Diafang dia Riders in. Mm. But after talking about the Fallen, that's where I think I'm heading. Get a unit of Fallen in there. Somehow. Get faster. <laughs> yeah. Somehow. One, one of these yeah, days somehow. I'll get it. But I'm going to edit this list and put them in there somehow. But I'll get to that. But uh -huh. Yeah, it's more, very balls to the wall, very little shooting. Just push it forward and see what happens. <laughs> what like. And then I would the like a Chim yeah, I would like a Chimera in there too, but 310 points. <laughs> yeah, he, he mm. needs a lot of room. Yeah. Mm. That's it. Mm. No, I like all the units you got there, especially the Reavers. I mean, Reavers just make me happy, but yeah, I like that. Mm. You've got lots of little threats that can't be ignored. And we've all got two troops of wolves. That's because they're awesome. Yes. Except yours. Yep. Yeah. Oh, did, did yours have a weapon? Yeah, I've got a mace, and he's got a bow. Oh, there you go. Mine are weaponless. Ah, oh, so the uh, lesser of the three armies. <laughs> My opinion is 
accounting for zero. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, right. Okay, we're done. Let's end this. Yep. Because I've got to go. <laughs> Been here long enough. All right. Thanks very much for listening. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thank Fishback. you both very much for having me on. No worries. It's been a pleasure. Um, we'll have <laughs> you on again, I'm sure. Okay, everyone else, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Yeah, direct misfire blowing up the game. Talking many war games is our aim. From rule books to advice, we cover it all With the best tactics, we never fall Ben summon spoon all your host every vid Misfiring, but aiming up ahead Comment, like, and subscribe today Keeping you notified and up to date Come check us out at facebook.com slash directmisfire Or shoot us over an email at directmisfire at gmail.com